Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on simple linear regression. Previously, we've talked about the one way ANOVA model. And this model had uh, a groups of observations. Within each group, the observations were assumed to have a common mean. So for group I, it had a mean of mu I. And amongst all of the groups, uh, the variability was the same, and that was sigma squared. So that variability did not depend on the group. All right, so now we're switching over. Rather than just separating observations by groups, we're going to separate observations by some uh, explanatory variable value that's continuous. And the model that we're going to be using is called the simple linear regression model. So overall, it looks quite a bit like the one-way ANOVA model, but the key piece that's changed is our mean. All right, so what we have now is we have each observation indexed by a single subscript i. So we have observations 1 up to, say, n. And those observations have each one are going to be assumed independent and normally distributed. And each one has a mean that depends on an explanatory variable for that observation, xi. So the mean of the observation for xi is going to be beta naught plus beta 1 xi, where xi is this explanatory variable. After we've accounted for that explanatory variable, then the variability amongst all the observations are the same. All right, so this is the model that we're going to be talking about in this regression setup, and we're going to go into more details in a couple of seconds. Before we get there, I want to comment that in different fields, the uh, response and explanatory variables have different names. So here are a few common names or pairs of names that are used in many different fields. Uh, I will tend to concentrate on using response and explanatory, but other folks use outcome and covariate, or dependent and independent variables, or endogenous and exogenous variables. Again, I'm going to stick to trying to use the terminology response and explanatory. All right, so what does this model say? Well, what is this model going to do? The idea here is that we have data that can be represented as a scatter plot. And in this scatter plot, we're going to plot the explanatory variable on the x-axis and the response variable on the y-axis. Right? And basically, the simple linear regression model says, let's try to draw a line through these data. So that's what we're going to try to draw. Now, there are many different lines that we could draw. And the line that we're going to be focused on is the line that has to do with the residuals. The residuals are these vertical distance that each observation is away from that line. So for instance, this observation down here, right, this vertical distance right there up to the line is the residual for that observation. So each observation has a residual, and it depends on the line that's drawn. The, the line that we're going to draw, that we're going to be focused on for the purpose of this simple linear regression, is the line that happens to minimize the sum of the square of those residuals. All right, so we're going to sort of try all possible lines and we're going to find the one that minimizes the sum of the square of the residuals. All right, so that's the goal for today. Um, before we get there, I want to comment on the interpretation of the parameters in this model. So on the left side, hopefully you can recognize it as the equation for a line. You might be used to seeing the equation y equals mx plus b, or y equals a plus bx, or something of that nature. Well, this is exactly the same, except that now on the left side, we have the expected value for y. So this is what do we expect the response to be for a particular value of our explanatory variable x. Well, what we expect it to be is beta naught, some intercept, plus beta 1, this is the slope, times the actual explanatory variable value of x. And that describes the mean. So that describes what we see on average. But we know from looking at that last picture that there's going to be variability around the line. And that variability is going to be described by this variance statement right here. So the variance of the observation conditional on knowing its explanatory variable value, that's x, is going to be sigma squared. And the key piece here is that this sigma squared does not depend on x. So the variability around the line is going to be constant everywhere. All right, so now this model has three parameters in it, beta naught, beta 1, and sigma squared. 
And so the purpose of this slide is just to give an interpretation for each of those parameters. All right, so the first thing to notice is that if your explanatory variable value is 0, so that is, if xi is in fact 0, so you just plug in 0 for this x, you plug in 0 there, that means that beta naught is, gets removed from this equation. That means the expected value of y, if the explanatory variable is 0, is beta naught. Right, so that's what we would say ma in mathematics. In English, what we say is that beta naught is the expected response when the explanatory variable is zero. Right, so that's the first parameter. The second parameter is beta one, and beta one we're going to look at by thinking about two scenarios: one where x i is x, and another one where x i is x plus one. All right, so I've written x plus 1 first, and all we do now is plug in, to the, instead of plugging in x here, we plug in x plus 1. If we multiply through, we get beta 1 times x plus beta 1. That's what we've written down here. And then if we say, well, what would have been had x just been equal to x? Well, that's just the equation that we had before. And now we can subtract these two. So we're going to take this equation minus the next equation. And what's left, because everything else cancels, this all cancels, the only thing that's left is beta 1. So what does this mean? This means that the difference between what we expect to have for a response when x is just little x, when our explanatory variable is x, versus when our explanatory variable is x plus 1, is beta 1. So said in English, this says that beta 1 is the expected increase in the response for each unit increase in the explanatory variable. So that's our second parameter. Our third parameter is sigma squared, and this comes directly from this variant statement up here that we have already seen, that sigma then is the standard deviation of the response for a fixed value of the explanatory variable. All right, so that's the quick slide on interpretation. The next slide is going to be how to actually find estimates for these parameters. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to first rewrite the equation that we had before. Rather than saying that y is a random variable that's normally distributed, we're going to write this as a linear combination of beta naught plus beta 1 xi plus some error, where the error now is normally distributed with mean 0 and variance sigma squared. All right, so this is the error. And we could rewrite this equation up here just by subtracting beta naught plus beta 1 xi from both sides. And we find out that our error is just what the actual response was for observation i minus what the line said it would be. And we can't, we never know these, ex these errors exactly because we don't know beta naught and beta 1, but we can estimate them by plugging in an estimate for beta naught and beta 1. That's the little hats. So the hat on top means that's an estimate. And this estimate we're going to call the residual. All right, so now the question is, well, how do we actually get these estimates in order to get that residual? All right, so the book uh, focuses on these being the least squares estimates or estimators. Um, but I just wanted to point out that these are the estimators under a number of different paradigms for finding estimators in statistics. Uh, in particular, maximum likelihood and also Bayesian estimators. And the estimators are, are these. All right, so these are the three parameters. Here's the estimates. Uh, this ratio of sx wild y to sxx, which we'll um, point out what those are in a second. We find the intercept then just by plugging in uh, the beta 1 that we get from this equation and using the average response and the average explanatory. And we get our uh, variance, just by taking the sums of squares errors, this is exactly the same as what we did in ANOVA. And now dividing by n minus 2, and the reason it's 2 here is because there's two parameters in the expression for the mean, beta naught and beta 1. Alright, so just to then define what these SXY, SXX, and SSE are, we have these equations right here. So these are basically the sums of these x and y components, where this x corresponds to xi minus x bar, and the y component is yi minus y bar. So then sxx is just the same thing, but plugging in x in both places, and that leads to getting xi minus x bar squared. 
and the sums of the squared errors is just then the residuals squared. Right, so notice once you have SXY and SXX, you can calculate beta 1 hat. You can calculate beta naught hat. Using those two up here, you can get the residuals and you can calculate the sum of squares for the residuals or the sum of squared errors. Okay, and just to be uh, formal and have all the equations on one page, uh, x bar is just the average of all the explanatory variable values. This is for all the observations. Y is just the average for the response variable. Okay, so this is how to get estimators, beta not beta 1 and sigma squared. And we might be interested in knowing, well, here's one estimate, but how good are those estimates? Or what kind of uncertainty do we have around those estimates? And so we're going to uh, quantify that uncertainty using the standard error of these two estimates. All right, so here's uh, just another formula. Here's the standard error for the parameter beta naught. We plug in the standard deviation that we estimated on the previous page, and we then have this formula, which we'll talk about Sx in a second. We have a similar formula for beta 1, but now there's no 1 over n out here, and there's no x bar in the numerator there. So sx squared is just sxx that we talked about on the previous page, divided by n minus 1. And sy, uh, which we're going to use in a second, is analogous, but now it's syy divided by n minus 1. We haven't talked about SYY, but you might have guessed that SYY is just the equations on the previous page where you plug in Y instead of the X's. All right, so now we have a relevant quantity to talk about here, where we have SXY defined on the previous page, divided by the N minus 1, and then all over the square roots of these two uh, calculations, these two estimated calculations. All right, so this right here, is called the correlation coefficient. We also can square that quantity. So we take this squared and we often refer to this as uh, r squared. So r squared is also, you can calculate by taking the sum of the squares total, subtracting the sum of the squares error, and dividing the sum of the squares total. This is just uh, exactly from the uh, ANOVA table we would have seen before, but now doing the ANOVA table for regression. And this is called uh, the coefficient of determination, but usually we refer to it as r squared. All right, here's the equation for sums of squares total. It's just the same as SYY. And one interpretation now is for this r squared. So this r squared, otherwise known as the coefficient of determination, is the percentage of the total response variation that is explained by the explanatory variable and later we'll get to more explanatory variables, and R squared will then be explained by all of the explanatory variables together. All right, so on the previous slide, we got point estimates for our parameters. We got beta naught hat and beta one hat. This slide, we're going to have standard errors of those estimators. And between those two, then we can construct some uh, inferential statements. So we can compute things like p-values and confidence intervals. And so the way we're going to com compute two-sided p-values is to calculate this quantity that we've seen before. Right? It's the estimate, the estimate divided by its standard error. And then we're going to say, what's the probability that a t-distributed random variable with n minus 2 degrees of freedom is greater than the absolute value of that quantity? Multiply that by 2, and we have a p-value for the test for whether beta naught is equal to 0 or not. And we can do exactly the same thing then for beta 1, for a test of whether beta 1 is 0 or not. Right? So both of these test the null hypothesis. The corresponding parameter is 0. Alternatively, we can uh, quantify our uncertainty by talking about the confidence interval. So the confidence interval is going to be looking exactly like a confidence interval that we've seen before. We take the parameter estimate, plus or minus a t critical value, times the standard error of that estimate. We can do that both for the intercept and for the slope. And these then provide ranges of the parameter value, parameters that are consistent with the data.
All right, so now I want to return to the picture that we had before. So the idea here is that we're trying to find uh, the line that best fits these data by finding the line that minimizes the sums of the squared of the residuals. And this, for this particular picture, happens to be that line. All right, so we are then going to uh, finish by looking at the uh, code in SAS that would fit this model and the output. So on the top, we just read the data in. And then here we use proc reg for regression. And here we have a model statement that looks exactly like the model statements we've had before, where we have the response variable on the left. It's equal to the explanatory variable or variables on the right. So here we think perhaps that the telomere length has something to do with the number of years. And so the length is going to be on the response and years are going to be the explanatory variable. All right, you'll notice that we have an analysis of variance table. So we have things like the sum of squared errors. Uh, sorry, the sum of squared errors here. The sum of squares total here. The difference is the model line sum of squares. Just as before, here's our estimate of sigma squared. Um, we also have the, the mean of the response right here. Then we have the estimates of our two parameters. This is the estimate for beta naught, our intercept, 1.37. And here's an estimate for our slope, negative 0.03. SAS then automatically calculates their standard errors. The T value here is just the parameter estimate divided by its standard error. This here is the P value that we saw on a couple of slides ago, where we're just testing the probability that we see a T statistic, a T yeah, statistic greater than or equal to this with the right degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom here are the number of parameters, number of uh, data points, which is 39, minus the number of parameters for the mean. There's a beta naught and beta one, so that's two. So right here we find the degrees of freedom, 37. So this is the p-value testing whether the intercept is zero. Right below it is the p-value for testing whether the slope is zero. That's beta one equals zero. And then on the right side, we have confidence intervals for first the intercept and then the slope. All right, thank you.